All right, so in this video, we're going to do a couple live rolls, and we're going to go sit down with Evan. We're going to watch the video. We're going to see where we can fix things that we made mistakes on, and that'll be part one. Part two, we're going to go through, and we're going to fix those mistakes. I'm going to teach him, and we're going to videotape him going live at Daisy Fresh trying to get that stuff. I made some mistakes in the audio in this video. I didn't realize it was still playing in the background. That's my fault. Hopefully, you guys can still hear some of it and get something out of it. Well, That's what it feels like in person. Yep. <laughs> I figured it would.
Um, Time. Got him right where I wanted him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got cool. Evan here, and we're going to go over the footage, and we're going to try to point out mistakes that we made, both of us, and where we can kind of do better. So I'm fucking just going to have phone. this right. Uh, guys, if you can see me on my phone in a video, rest assured I'm not, answer I'm not answering messages or anything like that. Okay, so uh, you let me get really dominant grips at the start a couple times, and then you did actually start hand fighting me back. But uh, you, you definitely got to hand fight way more aggressively. Yeah. And if you're ever backing up while the guy's coming forward, mm -hmm. that's not good, especially off a of grip break because your upper body's going to posture up, and I'm going to mm -hmm. really get attached to the legs really easily. So it helps, like, come down, treat it like a wrestling match, come down and hand fight with your head, hand fight with your, your body positioning also, and not just uh, kind of like back up and try mm -hmm. to disengage. Now, when you get put on uh, shin on shin or two on one, mm -hmm. okay, you have to put the hip into the pocket. So like you've got to actually take my hip and pin it down on the mat this way. So like your knee ideally mm. is going to go right here, but with my hip actually pinned down this way. That way I can't lift you off to the side. Um, it looks like there's an underhook here, but it's not a safe underhook. It's not really going to lead into a knee slice because I'll be able to take my other hand around. And I'll be able to post it on the side of your head and just kind of like offset your weight. So this would be a good one to start with. Just learning how to deal with shin on shin and put the hip into the pocket. Uh, this happened a couple mm -hmm. times. Uh, it's saying it's it's, oh, it's easy to stop an knee slice is just not true. But if you're ever going to be like grabbing ankles, and especially when you're reaching out, even from butterfly guard, uh, you want to have one of your hands ready to deal with over-the-top knee slices and knee slices in general. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your other hand, the, the side that's not getting underhooked, and it's going to come across and you're going to post it on the side of my head over here. So it's actually going to go right here and you're going to just work on pushing me away from my underhook. Hmm. So don't let go of the ankle grip because it's the only thing keeping you alive. You, you made a mistake kind of grabbing it without having the ability to stop the knee slice, but if you've got it, keep it and just work on pushing the head off to the side. Okay. So for knee on belly, when you go to push mm -hmm. it off, you got to be real careful. You don't actually uh, lift your elbow up on those underhooks. Because you still want, you can still push the knee off, but it's got to be from like a really tight frame. Okay. So instead of like a frame where your elbow lifts so up, it's got to be a frame. Where, elbow. Yep. Don't flare your elbows. Okay. That'd be a general rule. Never flare your elbows. Especially in the guy at the office. And I don't think I ended up doing too much with it. I was thinking about spinning to the on bar. I was thinking about uh, actually using the chaser back to me, but I didn't end up going for it. So you didn't get punished, but you did set me up. So you do a good job hip escaping. You get a really good hip movement. You don't get a good head. more in the moment. You see I'm, I'm able to get away with doing a lot of different movements before you're really kind of mentally catching up and reacting. Yes. Uh, that's, that, that could just be an experience thing, but it's also something that comes from growing up. Because the more you grow, you start to think in terms of moves, and you start to think in terms of, like, chains, mm -hmm. and that's going to influence how quickly you go for new things, even if it's not something you've drilled before. And it just changes how you mentally approach you get to. But it takes a lot of time to get up with really partners. Now, I would say when I was on your back, you didn't do uh, the right job of really pressuring your hips. You did try to fight me a couple times on not letting me take you to the underhook side, which yeah. is good. But it, it was like a token effort, and then when that failed, you just didn't go back to fighting you. <laughs> so the, what's got to be happening the whole time, like it, it sucks having your arm trapped, but before your arm ever gets trapped, you've got to be continuously pressuring your hips out into my foot, uh, kind of like you're trying to rotate away from me. Or you've got to be trying to slide down or slide up and pressure me some way. So like your hips are always doing something. They're either going to the other side, mm. or they're pushing up into me, or they're sliding down, or they're pressuring out into the foot. The, the hips never stop moving. Even if you're getting choked, your hips are still moving and pressuring, because that's the only thing that's really going to get you out in the end. And then your hand defense has just got to become automatic. Yep. Uh, when you do actually get your arm trapped, it's not the end of the world. It just feels like it. So a lot of times it's hard to keep that trap. And a lot of times I'm giving up control over your hips in order to trap your arm a little bit. Mm. But the big thing you've got to do is, you know, not panic. You can't just fight the choke forever, though. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's worth it to just brace your neck and tuck your chin and just 
pray to God, and then go down and just try to push the foot off with two hands, and really try, you know, like do everything you can to get that arm back. You know, that's what's actually going to save you, unless you really can't spin your hips out anymore. Uh, <laughs> sliding down and then putting you into a uh, reverse triangle a lot of times, pressuring up and in the middle because it helps you kind of like drag your arm so like uh, yeah like pushing up towards my towards head. head I like that you don't stand straight up uh, you reach a lot with your lead arm which is not as big of a deal if you're not wrestling but it's like a little bit with you uh, I thought it was good to the people but I let you like, like I got a two on one grip and I pulled myself in to a two on one on the leg so I don't have a name for this guard yet but it, it's like my shin on shin reverse De La Hiva hybrid that I play and then uh, your frame. As soon as I came up, once you recognize that you're swept, you want to immediately change gears and just start playing guard. I think you, you maybe thought that you get up a little bit too long, and then I was able to. You yeah. notice I'm always kind of pinning someone's hips down into headquarters right away, but then you didn't keep your top frame like stable enough and braced enough, so I was mm -hmm. able to just sprawl out on it right away. Which is why I teach that pass uh, the way that I do. You, it's one of the most frequent passes that I get from headquarters. Now, you did a really good job keeping a tight butterfly hook. I get a little overzealous thinking I was just going to backstep out of it, but you actually did the pressure. You can stick on my butt and try to backstep out against your pressure. So then I had to come back down and smash it down. You did another good job keeping my butt and I had to use some easy football chance to get out. So that was really good. Good luck, player. This is more to point out something that I'm doing that you can incorporate into your mm -hmm. game. I am constantly bringing legs or feet over top of their yeah. their arm from side control and just pinning it down to take it out of play. And uh, what it does, it stops you from rotating to the other side too. So I know you can only turn into me, and when you're turning into me, it's really easy to slide down, chase your back, or it's easy to uh, start going towards mouth. Right. Now the best time to escape mount is but well, before you actually get mounted, right away. but like right away, because all that happens after you let me solidify is like I get my knees pinched, I get my feet hooked under you, I start to pressure you, now you'd have to escape against my pressure offensive threat. So it's another one that's just not pausing and kind of putting your timing out uh, from drilling and just kind of switching how you mentally approach it. Which is kind of what you would. Now I think you made a big mistake when you reached across right here. A lot of people can't catch it as quickly, so I know you, you weren't really expecting it, but I'm so paranoid if I'm ever mounted. And you're still not dead. Okay, so as soon as you get gift wrapped, you just do everything you can to put the shoulder back down on the mat. Like, you get your elbow back down, get your shoulder back down, you yeah. basically just force it down. And a lot of times you can free your elbow, you can at least delay how long it takes me to, to slide under and chase your back. Mm. <laughs> And then there you could have kept trying to turn out, but then you could have tried to spin out. Uh, it's a safe transition in the back, you really have to get away, but during the transition is when you have the best chance of actually getting away. Right. Uh, the same advice here. Uh, you just can't fight the choke with your arms, wherever your arms got to eventually come down and assist feeling that foot off. Look how fucking white my toes are. It's, oh my god. Guys, I have rain out syndrome. I've had it my whole life, and it's playing video games in the cold and out in there, but yeah, my feet are frozen. We turned the heat off, so we didn't have the heater running. That was a better attempt to step in. Um, the step in, like you went off to the side and went backwards, which was good. But I got the same hook on your shin again, I, yep. and you see how I'm already up here framing on your head? Yes. That's the yeah, okay. that's the knee slice defense I was yep, talking about. That way it makes it very difficult way. for you to come in. And <laughs> I actually say that I'm trying to which uh, you don't feel bad if you ever get stuff like that. It's, it's honestly such a good offensive move. Even if you fuck it up, it still leads somewhere down the line into the chain. So, you know, You see how right now you could be pressuring your hips up yes. really hard? Like trying to drag your elbow line out. 
I guess kind of swivel my wrist inside with this thing. It feels like a purse. Swivel your wrist inside depending on how tight I have it. That's it. But the problem is my hand just comes down and waits for it to come out, and then I just recatch it right away, yep. and it makes it very difficult. Feels like a purse. Yep. <laughs> I figured it would. See what I mean? Yep. Right away to the chin hook. Yep. Right away to the butterfly hook down here. Um, you, you left an underhook opening for a little bit here, and I catch the top. That that one's hard to say. Um, I mean, you could have kept the elbow in tight. You could just make it like that. Honestly, you could just make it like that. 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 Now, when I, before I got the hook, you could have kept jumping to get that. Because I didn't get a clean jump. I actually fucked up getting that hook. So that should have been an insertion and hook for me. I, I just didn't actually make my leg get all the way up. So that would have been a great time for you to actually just start hip escaping and turning into me and getting your shoulder back down. You actually might have got away. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty warm right now. No big question. I don't think I noticed how frequently I, I open my elbow and train this so like I'm doing it kind of out of habit. I'm getting really used to it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.